polypropylene, and number six, which is polystyrene, and then some number seven, which is mixed materials. For example, your camera body there is probably ABS, and we can do that. Um, others, we don't do. It's just a, so there, there are reasons for that because of off gases and uh, volatile materials, and also um, temperature differences. So we can mix any of those materials together and get a, a pretty good synthetic or mixed oil. What about the lighter weight um, packaging, you know, like chip wrappers? No things? problem. Uh, um, foil, things like that is alright. Basically, it's not going to turn the foil or aluminum into oil. You're going to end up with that as a residue. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, what about, I don't like, think you want to burn the press. Contaminants, like, contaminants like that stuff going in there. Well, in a the commercial system, yeah. and this one we got to clean out the, the garbage at the end, but yeah. it's going to end up as ash mostly because that's it's going to be carbonized. And generally in a commercial system, if you're running relatively clean plastics, uh, you're let, you get less than 1% of the uh, material remaining as ash or carbon, what's called char. Yeah. And um, in the commercial systems, it'll fall into a residue tank, and that residue tank gets reheated. Okay. So if there's any oil that falls in there, it's okay. regasified and okay. so Well, thanks, Jason, for coming, everybody. Everybody, this is Jason Tanney from E Energy, and uh, he represents Blast in the United States. And amazing technology, yeah, to convert the plastic back into oil. And so, we really appreciate you coming out and showing this, and just all the different players in the group here. We've got a lot of people represented, so it's really exciting to have you all okay. here. And well, we're happy to be here and come around and introduce yourself and we'll shove some plastic in here and we'll show you how it works. <laughs> plastic. You should tell us how to do it. Do we need to cut it up or wash it or anything? Well, because of space, and this is a very limited space, we get a lot of air space in there, so sometimes we'll cut it up to make more, but we don't really need to do much to it. Just, just, uh, just so make fits. it fit in there and we'll shove it in there. Okay. Um, Number two, four, five, six. So all this Bring stuff we found in the trash. Yeah. And just sat it. in our trash can. Random plant pods. Yeah. Uh, whatever Ziploc containers. Things that aren't readily recyclable in the local PVC's community as well. Yeah. PVC's 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 There's so nothing at all inside that plastic. This is fertilizer. Fine. Probably wouldn't have a little drip line. <laughs> I'll probably reuse the container for a couple of years. <laughs> Lauren, what kind of what's the drip line? Is that a it's HDPE, right? I'm not sure, but we can we can yeah. try. It's, 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 it's number two. So uh, drip line container. So what happens if you do put some number one or number three? Well, number one, generally, the reason why we don't do number one is those are fairly well downcycled. And uh, they generally need to be done at a higher temperature. It's not going to be much happen. You may get a little bit of residue. Um, remnant of the number one. But uh, this unit here will go. Well, we can push it really high. We can actually run number one. In it, but we don't. Um, PVC. It's not going to do anything. But off gases we don't want to deal with. Yeah. So that's the reason we're not doing it. Gotcha. Um, most things we can handle. The mixed ones are tricky because you get nylons in there. But a lot of the electronics, or electronic recyclers, that kind of stuff, the ABS is fine. If you don't mix those, we would run that individually. And there's some reasons for that because we actually have to change the off gas filter. It's kind of like this is a catalytic converter. Change the off gas filter. So, so most things we can mix. The ABS you can run <laughs> Individually. So, 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 Milu. so, Jason, is this an option of that video we saw of the Japanese gentleman? Yeah, basically, we are the distributor in the Americas, and soon we are going to be manufacturing here. So, we're building more on And the cap is fine for this. This is a. Oh, yeah, the cap is good. So, Jason, uh. Well, there's actually a part of the. This one is running, we'll run at about, today we'll run at around 
800 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take some, about 420 degrees Celsius. Is it well, we can push it higher. What's that? Is it pressurized? Well? There is pressure, but it's uh, not heavy pressure. And basically, you'll see how much comes through there and what, what it'll bubble through in the water, and the gas will be forced through the uh, filter and it'll be active to see it. Does the fuel characteristic? depend on the type of and ratio of plastics that you're using? Yeah, it'll affect it, but generally, if you were to mix polystyrene, polyethylene, polypropylene, you'd probably get 15 to 30 percent of about three or four different fuels. You'd get some gasoline equivalent, diesel, kerosene, and then some heavy oil, which is like a type A heating oil. <laughs> but uh, we could show you some before you need some. We made gasoline the other day. What we do is we take the mixed oil, and then we go back and distill it off at about 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very clear, and it's, it's, we have a go kart which we can't really run on the surface. But, and behind you, you have a little portable two cycle generator, and that's actually there's, there's that fuel exclusively in there, and we'll run it for you. Uh -huh. And we can show you. You can smell a little difference in the actual end product because it's not you know, me. You can take but, this product and put it. We, yeah, we will. We'll show you. Um, today, this will take about three hours, so we probably don't have time to take this into the next stage, which we, once you take this oil, we go in and say, oh, I want some diesel. So we set it to a different temperature, and the diesel comes off, or gasoline comes off, depending on those temperatures that those fuels go off at. So. You have to do them in order, do the gasoline first, and then the diesel, and then the fuel. Um, it's probably better, because this thing is fairly simple the way are. And the systems that we make, we make these this small scale hydrocarbon distillation units, it all happens simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So it's really, so, but we generally would take gasoline off first, and the next one, so that's about 150, 160 degrees. Drain it out. We don't use water at that. Go to 230, which is I think uh, diesel, and then 280 kerosene, mm -hmm. and those all would come off, and you drain them off, and, and the remainder would be. Uh, basically a heavy oil in the tank, which we can talk about with that. So, what's the off-gas? The off-gas is some pyrite gas, and that has a lot a lot of hydrogen, some carbon in it, a little bit of sulfur, but it goes, it can be burned in a generator. They have It can be burned to run the unit, potentially? If you're generating electricity, yeah. All the units are electrical, and they're very efficient in that um, the commercial systems use about um, three to four kilowatts of power per gallon of fuel. So what we're talking about, just the system itself, about 25 to 30 cents in power based on average U.S. cost per, per gallon, per gallon. Of, of mixed oil. And then if you have some automation on there, a granulator, which we need, and uh, maybe a belt feeder or something that's automatically feeding, you're probably at about 40 cents a gallon. So they're all electrical. Um, where they've been deployed in some places like Africa, uh, the systems are being solar powered, so they can use some of the off gas. It's not enough usually to fuel the system, but um, we have a project with the military, and it basically is fueling the system produced from the oil from that and powering other systems to try and eliminate their total waste stream and de for deployed bases. Can you tell us more about where they've been deployed and the projects you've yeah. so far? Well, we've just started here in the U.S., so there's only a couple of systems in the U.S right now that are demo systems. Um, internationally, there's a couple in Europe, a uh, number of them in Japan, uh, in different applications from commercial to municipal. There are a uh, couple of systems in Africa that are mostly uh, NPO. There is about to be a commercial system in Africa. I can't really talk to that because I don't know the details. There are uh, a couple of NPO projects going in Nepal where systems are actually mobile, moving around to communities. And um, then there is uh, also, again, back in Japan, there's a number of small islands where municipalities are running the systems. And they even have right now uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken and some of the processing plants. They apparently bring in the chicken in large bags that are uh, high density polyethylene. And they are running pilot projects right now. And they're using it to create heating oil for their facilities. And they're cutting the cost down by about 25% on their their uh, oil consumption and big waste stream because they generally have to pay to have that hauled off and in Japan they incinerate. So, if you don't mind just speaking a little louder, I think some of the outer circle is 
having trouble <laughs> okay. hearing you. What's the cost Sorry about that? This unit it runs around about fourteen thousand dollars, and it's because these units uh, are not being sold in any volume; they're being produced in very small quantities. They're really for demos. Uh, don't think it was something. Some, a lot of people are coming to us, unfortunately, because the way the videos are structured that the UN created, they're thinking home oil making. Well, it's not really designed for that. And to kind of give you an idea, eight pounds of plastic would give you a gallon of gas. So. Um, great for demos. This takes about two pounds. We get about a liter out if we don't have all this airspace. So, but the commercial systems are really what our focus is. And so, you know, we can talk more if you're interested in larger, larger systems. Larger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's not, it, they're, they're a little different and we'll show you in a, some presentation slides, things like that afterwards so you can get a nice concept of it. What, do you, what about permitting on the larger systems? Well, that's a county by county, state by state, city by city issue, and it varies. But and we're, we're trying to learn that. So you're putting me on the spot a bit here. I can't answer all the issues. But generally speaking, we're we're, uh, um, we're actually going uh, Monday to Sacramento to meet with Cal Recycle, and some of those discussions are going to occur. Um, generally speaking, the waste and the off gas that's produced is fairly safe. You do have some high temperatures. You know, it's going to be an industrial device. There's going to be some old shit things to climb. But, but basically, um, Cal Recycle, we're going to work and, and we'll also with the a EPA group up there to figure out what needs to be done. Um, but the overall things that are coming off of this are, are kept to a minimum, so we don't think that's a big issue. Obviously, different areas have different rules regarding storage of fuels and tank size and things like that. So I, I don't know what those those rules are, even right here or any other place. <clears throat> How clean does the plastic have to be? Um, relatively clean, but you can have food waste on it. We throw some things in here with dirt. It's fine. Um, generally, we granulate it down to about 10 millimeters. And the biggest issue is actually large volumes of liquid, particularly water because what happens is you get an emulsified fuel. And emulsified fuels are okay if you have very special systems to burn them, but not so good if you don't. And uh, so water is the biggest enemy in volumes, in gallons and things like that. It'll still go through the system. It's not gonna stop it, but it will get mixed into the fuel. What kind of amperage are you gonna need?